Not really, but I don't want to say it. Anyway, so I'd like to introduce myself once again. My name is Wasa Dechimode Julius. I'm privileged to be a speaker today to share with you our uh, roles in WordPress. So I think Sunday has entered on this. Uh, the various roles you can tap into, going to specialize in, and you become an expert in a specific WordPress field as you want um, I work with uh, an agency based in Australia called MRKWP that is uh, that has sponsored that has not sponsored but has invested in me to share this particular knowledge. So that's why you would notice some little change in my branding compared to the previous sessions we've been having. So MRKWP is uh, an agency based in Australia once again that specializes in WordPress content only, and we also have learning materials. For you to tap into that are for free, and for you to get up to speed with some of the roles that are global, like Sandy has told you. So, today, what are we going to be discussing? Uh, WordPress versus other tech roles we have. There isn't, you know, much of a very big difference. Everything is kind of similar. The technical skills you're going to need when it comes to coding, whether you're working with WordPress or any other platform, are similar. Problem solving, you basically have to be a problem solver. You are able to, you know, whatever system or tools you're going to use when it comes to coding. Continuous learning, as you all know, things are always changing. User experience and user interface, or UX is all the same. You are always going to collaborate. So the only difference you are having with other tech roles, by other tech roles, I mean them to someone who does data science, uh, someone that does systems using Node.js, React, those particular and this particular side you can see we are only talking about roles that are specific to WordPress, and that's what I'm going to be discussing. So another comparison that I would like to talk about is freelance versus full time. The roles are going to be similar. Currently, I have a full-time position with the agency that I'm working with. And freelancing is also something that I could do the same. The difference with freelancing is, with full-time, I get a chance to just focus on this particular thing. So, like Sandy has said, he's focusing on only WooCommerce, especially with WooCommerce. As a freelancer, as you all know, you basically have to know most of the things. Am I correct? So, there's that bit of generalization. Freelance, again, you could have just a little bit of knowledge about something. But these particular full time positions, most especially the global ones, if you're a full time WooCommerce specialist, you should have in depth knowledge of whatever role you choose to pursue. So, one of the roles that I'm going to talk about, and this is what I'm doing at MRK, I'm a WordPress administrator. So, here I am um, an IT personnel that just ensures the websites are running very well. They are up to date. Any particular security issues they have, I patch them up, I run updates. If we updated the theme and some CSS broke, that is what I'm doing across the line. But you can take a look at some of the roles they are doing. You have to ensure that all the environments, all the staging, everything is up to date. You're basically doing the administration role for these particular websites, not the administration role in office. So we have agencies could have a ton of websites under management. Let me say 15. And you have to take care of these particular websites to ensure all of them are working out very well. Last week, just 20.2, I think, or 20.2.1 had the vulnerability, whereby it had something that would compromise the security. So the whole of last week, we just have to ensure that the latest version of just is rolled out across all our websites. And when you're rolling out those updates, something is not supposed to break. So that is something you're supposed to be focusing on. And when you're WordPress administrator, what jobs are there for you? You'll be a WordPress manager, a website manager like I've told you, systems administrator. You don't really have to have very in-depth knowledge about this, but you can you just have to understand the ecosystem, understand how WordPress works, understand the things and everything. Where can you find the jobs? Digital agencies are there, e-commerce website agencies, government, everyone is outsourcing. So this is a role that is going to be required. If you're a developer and you scale your websites, you can't, you can't manage all the great websites. 
Of course, there are tools coming in to automate some of the processes, but you need an administrator type of idea. So, content manager. Um, I think this one cuts across. So, we have to, what makes websites is the content. Trillion stores is built because it has content based on the products. A news website daily monitor is there because it has the content. Any website, TechCrunch, CNN, Toyota, they have the content. So there has to be someone to manage this particular content. And uh, this is what the WordPress content manager is responsible for. When you get clients, as an agent well as a freelancer, the biggest hurdle you have when it comes to finishing that particular project, it could be the funds at a certain point, it could be the tools, but the huge challenge is one, it's the content. Client doesn't even know what should be on the about us page. That's up to you. You have ChatGPT and everything. So content manager, that's some other role that you should focus on. I mean, uh, people, there are people who just wake up to write articles on how to install WordPress. And that is a specific role that you could tap in. You don't have to stress yourself with the whole world, like most of your do. You could just do content, and it's a very rich area. Maybe a point on this. So when AI is coming in right now, it's making things a little bit easier. But there is a difference when it comes to human written content and AI generated content. For instance, if I wake up and I, I would like to again review restaurants, when I go to ChatGPT and I tell it, write for me a review of a person who has had a burger from Cafe Jamas, it will write it. But Google is so intelligent that it will even know that I'm just getting an image from the internet and I attach it to that article or that review. So the way it will wrap my content or the way it will give my content is different from a person who will go to Cafe Javas, take his own image, because that is also part of content creation. They take their own image, they take their own selfie, and they write something that is really showing that this person went there. I do not want to read a review of a person who used AI to write a review. I would like that review to come from a person that I'm seeing. goes to content creation in terms of video. We've had people that, we have had tools that can just do the speed for you. But when I watch a YouTube tutorial and I see Hamza's image there in the, in the circular bit, I know that this is a human helping you to do this. So content management is very, very key. And here you can be an editor, a writer, marketing manager. Again, you could manage that particular website that is really content driven, like you saw Mwado. And the jobs are there. Still goes back to the agencies, also give yourself a job and so on and so forth. So so far two roles. I'm just getting started. This thing is huge. So what press is SEO? And from the content you've written it, but how do you allow your content to rank high on Google? What position are you on Google? By Google's position, I mean when I type in what can I tell you, it brings in results. Right? It brings me several results there. And none of us goes beyond the three results they give you. You guys just open the new tab, open in the new tab, you stop on position number three. So if you do not have the knowledge on doing good SEO, this is a product that everyone needs. I see companies spending so much money when it comes to SEO ads and everything. And what happens with search engine optimization, you optimize your content so that when people search for it on the internet, they easily find it. We have various tools we use for that. We could have SEMrush, could have the Yoast and the likes to help you write very good content. And um, we have things like keywords. It's a whole entire concept. But SEO specialists, you can just look up and just specialize in that. You don't have to know everything. You don't have to spread yourself thin, like someone said yesterday. You can just be in that particular field. You master it very well. And to enjoy uh, for example, one of them. I will share these particular slides for you to read and we really go through them. So that is uh, what the WordPress SEO does and the jobs they can get have as an SEO editor, SEO specialist, the content writer, and the sources of jobs are more similar. No one likes to build a very good website at the end of the day. These guys are really talking about design. If your website is very, very nice and it looks very nice, but your first image on the web page is 1 MBs, okay, let me say 5. 
and Google doesn't like pages that are helping, it becomes a little bit useless. Because at the end of the day, there are very few people that go to the internet and type trillion look stores. Do you know what people type in Google search? They will, try, they will type African made shoes and Google will look through its library and it will tell them, I think trillion stores can give it. So Google doesn't like to refer you to websites that are heavy, that are going to give you a very poor experience and so on and so forth. What best developer? This is a hot cake. So for guys who want to be millionaires, quick, quick, this is where the money is. Of course, other roads have money. But here we have this particular gap when it comes to uh, WordPress developers. So we've been using the themes, we've been using the plugins, this documentation, this CSS, this JavaScript. Most of you have came and told me you would really like to work on it. WordPress development is a whole entire thing on its own. It's having very many opportunities, that's why I can testify to it. And if you even have the skills, um, people are looking for you. That's the fact. The difference we have here with other tech pros is that we, when you're a WordPress developer, we expect you to do specific things. We have books, we have actions. And there are people who are going to talk about those. Another person I saw, I think, in the program is going to talk about solid principles. But those are spread across programming. WordPress development, the jobs are there. And the gap is actually there because look at all this. You have to customize specific things. The clients will like your theme, but they will tell you to tweak it. So, you can go to WordPress.org and the documentation should then read about what they do, but there is debugging, they can integrate with APIs, like those that don't really miss the sending of emails, messages, testing plugins. I mean, these guys even do things and plugins that you can sell for yourself. So, a WordPress developer, for instance, this is what I'd like to take away from this slide, is different from an administrator. The role I cover at my particular place is the administration job. Of course, I have to know some CSS, I have to know HTML, I have to know the JavaScript, I have to know the PHP. But that does not make me a WordPress developer. And I'm not discouraging whoever calls himself a WordPress developer at the end of the day. But a WordPress developer is one who really like, create that plugin, maybe do some serious modification when it comes to the custom post sites and everything. So you should know the difference between the two. But, this is where the hot cake is, and I'm encouraging most of you, if you could venture into WordPress development, of course you need the basics of coding, so that you can now specialize into WordPress development. And for the jobs, the theme developer is there, again, you can come in with WordPress administrator specialist. So, for a WordPress developer, you're like at this particular level. I mean, by the time you now to develop a plugin, then you will know what will cause it, what has caused it to break, in case you update it. So you'll find that the jobs that you have to expect, there are very few things that the developer who cannot do, that an administrator can do. So WordPress development is also another area for you. And where you can find the jobs, uh, this one I'll tell you, everywhere. Uh, we have a platform that is dedicated for WordPress developers, it's called Codeable.io, you could look into it. Local employers within the market, I know there is Kanzu code, Back there in Kampala, there are serious people when it comes to WordPress development jobs. They're also running a bootcamp that was the best of this case, working with everything. So, WordPress developer jobs, what most of you came for, I think I've hated on it. Then, a plugin developer, this one now knows development, but he has said it just focus on the plugin. So, it's just being that used plugin. And he's not bothered about your theme development, so he's just a plugin developer. To build and maintain the plugins, things, clean valid code, and the libraries, <laughs> integrate, test. So, you can be a general WordPress developer, and again, you just decide to specialize into plugins. The beauty about this the more you specialize, the more knowledge you get, and the more opportunities you have out there, because you will be very few people that can do that particular role and the dev jobs, we looked into them, and the sources of those particular jobs. So designers are the next people here we're going to talk about. I think those guys have expressed themselves the whole morning. Am I correct? They have told us how rich they are, right? 
don't wait for the board results. But they also have jobs when it comes to designing WordPress. You have to have that particular good call to action button on your particular landing page. Supposed to implement the SEO strategies, create the visual style so that the website looks nice. I mean, I understand other has a background in graphics design, but have you seen some element of good design today? In everything you've seen from the presenters, their slides and everything, there's that particular quality. And for people who are always behind your computers, people say you guys are not good designers, but we will improve it. We will improve. So, the designer jobs, uh, we've talked about uh, Wycliffe. Say he has some. Um, the one who gave us funds. So it's another source of jobs and everything. Other roles. So I cannot finish everything. Uh, I did not say he was coming, but you can see his role is very listed here. Wukama specialist. So Wukama should really contribute so much when it comes to WordPress. Like they should have their own sector because these guys help us with selling products online. You have the cloud engineers who help you host everything. Marketing. You know, you have to market that particular agency. All the agency requires you to market it. So database administrator. WordPress runs on a database. There are people who are just specialized. They know how the WordPress database runs. That's the only bit. So those rules are also there, and they're very lucrative. The maintainers, or someone just do web hosting. Customer support specialist. Some of you host with Cloudways, host data, and everything. They are support people. So you could also just wake up. You have to understand WordPress. A person is not going to approach you in the chat board, in the chat board when you don't know what WordPress is. And you could just wake up and you just be a support engineer. I think a lady there is one of them. And Sandy explained to us that's how we started this journey. So every company has customer care support, be it MTN and everything. But we're not going to pick you, John, and we put you in MTN to just do customer support. You must be understanding the telecom ecosystem. So that's the same thing with WordPress. When you specialize and you offer people very good WordPress support, you need to understand the rules very well. So how to make the right choice at the end of the day? Define your goals and assess your skills, know your strength and every bit. I think the goal bit is, you know, the most uh, important bit. However much I've told you that developer jobs are really lucrative and everything. You could define your role and you say, I would really want to be a very good content person when it comes to WordPress. So that I will produce very good content for my clients and everything. <coughs> you don't have to really, when I say research available roles, if you specialize in something and you're very good at it, the roles are going to be there. So define your goal very well, assess your skills. At the end of the day, you should really do what you feel like doing. This is the beauty about WordPress. It hasn't limited anyone in this particular slides. Is there anyone in the audience who has felt like I've not talked about what they really want to do? Is there any? I mean, even if you want to sell food, you have an opportunity here. So, the rules are very tremendous. Then, consider support and maintenance in whatever you're going to do. Just before committing. Most of us are very young. So for the students who are here, experiment. You have the chance, you have the chance, you have the time. Travel very quickly before you commit. Because when you commit to something that has worked out for you, everything will really, really be great. Yeah, know a little about everything, and I'm not going to take it away from you. Do not really be that particular content provider who has it now to use the editor. I mean, sometimes someone will not be there to help you put in the content. So I know a little about something here and there, so that also will you contact Arthur to install for you WooCommerce and give you a bit of 5 million. Okay? You have an idea to be at the, the plugin is free. So know something at the end of the day. Yeah, so right now I'd like to take uh, feedback and questions. I would really like to listen from students who have the opportunity to look at this particular presentation, all this content from a distance because you have the chance to make your decision. I mean, someone said if they had this presentation in there, earlier years would have been better than this. So they were regretting our decisions, but they didn't much have the chance. So for the students, I would really encourage all of them to give me a question. Then I would also like to welcome the audience. If you have any particular question on this particular rules, please um, encourage you to um, come up and give me one. 
other than that, thank you, thank you very much for your attention and uh, I'm available for in case of any other inquiries. Thank you. How comes that WordPress sites always slow? Thanks. Like when it comes to loading, eh? at times they go slow. Okay then, um, say it's optimizers, yeah? are you around? You're around, eh? Okay, I'll just share a few insights on that. So I don't think what we say is a slow. I think it depends on the person. And uh, I wish we had enough time. We could have experimented on which site is slow. Like the one which you've seen which is slow. Because I know some that are fast. But here are the few things that will contribute. Uh, where are you hosting from? So if you're hosting from like GoDaddy and uh, Bluehost, some hosting providers will give you very good hosting services at the end of the day. So it depends on why you hosted your website. <coughs> if you hosted a very good place, then they have contributed something to you. Another thing you come to is how that page is. Is the page that they have already told you about image size. If the page is very if the images are very heavy, then the page is going to definitely be very slow. Maybe I would encourage you to look into caching plugins that help you, you know, minify the code, make it very smaller, allow the cache of those pages. I really don't want to make things complicated. To store a copy of those pages just there. Cache is another concept that we can talk, talk about. But I don't think they're really slow. I think it depends on who has built something. I make them build a very fast site. But don't forget the country in which you're in. Be your service provider. Is it like? <laughs> okay, then uh, I'd like to just turn uh, over to the next speaker. Thank you very much. In case of any other questions, kindly reach out to me and uh, have a very great afternoon. Thank you.